Hey there everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we'll be building an Android PDF viewer using PSPDF Kids Android library. We do have a written version of this tutorial on our website for those of you who prefer reading. You can find the link in the description. However, if you wish to follow along, all you need is a copy of Android Studio. Though this tutorial has been done on a Windows machine, the process is similar for Linux and Mac machines as well, so you shouldn't have a problem following along. Here's what we'll be covering in this video. We'll get started by integrating PSPDF Kits library into a fresh Android Studio project. We'll then present a document from Android's assets folder. And finally, we'll let the user choose a document through Android's file picker. So without further ado, let's get started. Fire up your Android Studio. Go to File, New, New Project. Android Studio provides pre-built templates for you to play with, but for this tutorial, we'll go with an empty activity. Select Empty Activity. Click Next. Name your project. You can name it whatever you like. Make sure your Android SDK is at least 21 because that's the minimum requirement for PSPDF Kids library. And as you can see, it covers most of the active devices. Click Finish. Now wait for Android Studio to complete its tasks. We integrate PSPDF Kids Android library into our project by the following two steps. Step 1. We add PSPDF Kids Maven repositories in settings.gradle. Step 2. We add PSPDF kit as a dependency in app slash build.gradle. So let's go ahead. To complete the integration, we sync the project with Gradle files. Once Android Studio is done, we will have successfully integrated PSPDF Kit into our project. Now that we successfully integrated PSPDF Kit's library into our project, we can go ahead and render a document from Android's Assets folder. Android Assets folder is located in App, Source, and in Main. And as you can see, our Android Assets folder is missing. To create our Android Assets folder, we right-click on App, go to New, go to Folder, and click on Assets Folder. Click Finish, and Android Studio will create our Assets folder. Since our Assets folder is empty, let's populate it with a PDF document that we would like to render. Right click on Assets folder, open in Explorer. We can render a PDF document through Android's PDF Viewer by the following steps. PSPDF Kits provides a very convenient PDF activity to open and render a document. So step 1 is to add PDF activity to our apps manifest. Step 2, we define a path to our document. Step 3, we can adjust the look and feel of our document by setting a configuration through PDF activity configuration. Step 4, we use PDF activity .show document to present the document. Open up your applications manifest.xml and add in the PDF activity. Save the file. Now go to mainactivity.kt and define the path to your document.
We now configure PDF activity like so. We pass in the context and call the build method. Now finally, we can present the document through PDF activity .show document. We pass in the context, we pass in the URI, and finally, we pass in the config. We can now build our application on an emulator by clicking on the run button. Wait for Android Studio to complete the build process. And just like that, we are now displaying our PDF document from Android Assets folder. Now let's go ahead and give the user the ability to choose their documents. We do that by the following three steps. Step 1. We describe an intent. Intents are messages we pass to the Android OS. They describe actions we want the system to perform on our behalf. Step 2. We pass the intent to Android. Step 3. We act on the result. Usually the result is passed to a callback function. We describe an intent by saying Since we want to open documents, we will go with the aptly named action open document. But we have to be a little more specific than that. There might be documents that the user might not have access or permission to open. We have to filter such documents. We do that by saying add category intent dot category openable. It also helps to specify the type of documents we are interested in. In our case, we are interested in PDF documents. Now let's send our intent to the Android system. We do that by saying start activity for result and we pass in the intent and we pass in the request code. Request codes help us identify intents and their corresponding results. The best place to do this in a separate file that holds all your constants but for this demonstration we'll do this here as a global variable. We pass in the request code. The new app compact library deprecated start activity for result. Not to worry, as we'll be covering the new method as well in this tutorial. When the user selects the document, we get the URI of the document in a callback function. It's an overridden function, so we say override on activity result. And as you can see, our callback function expects a request code and a result code. Result code tells us if the result of our activity is successful or not. And we have our result in data. We can go ahead and rename it to result data. Now we perform the following checks. We can get our document's URI like so.
Now that we have our documents URI, we can go ahead and specify our PDF activities config like we did earlier. And we present the document by saying PDF activity that show document. We can now build and run our application by clicking on the run app button. We now have a file picker that lets the user explore and choose a document. The latest app compact library deprecated start activity for result. It demands we utilize the new register for activity results API. What this API does is it lets you make a contract and this contract in turn has a callback where you can act on the activity's result. So let's see this in action. We keep our intent as is and replace the start activity for result with our new register for activity result. And we replace the on activity result function with our on done function. And everything is similar from here on. We can copy and paste from our previous example. We save our file and build our application. And as you can see, we achieved our goal by using the new Register for Activity Results API. Hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.